Okay, my name is Sylvia Kuriam. I'm a small-scale organic farmer, uh, farming in Limuru, but right now we are here in our farm in Maimahio. So I've been farming um, upwards of uh, 10 years, and I just started small in a kitchen garden just to grow food for my family. And um, with time, the food was more than enough. And that's when we decided to go a bit more large-scale and go commercial and sell our um, organic produce. The basic explanation about organic farming is actually growing food without using any synthetic inputs, meaning you're not using any synthetic pesticides, fertilizers, uh, the animals don't have any antibiotics. And generally, it's a more natural way of growing food, just as Mother Nature intended. But organic farming is actually a wide approach uh, to how you can be able to grow your food. And now, you know, we have so many terms that are coming up. And one that I feel describes me best is agroecology. It took me quite some time to, you know, like even to understand it myself because I didn't even know that I was actually practicing agroecology for a very long time. But basically, you know, there's a way in, uh, like in which nature works. So we are trying to mimic nature. So we are doing um, agriculture in a way that supports biodiversity, and supports the natural way that farming is actually done. One major aspect of agroecology is biodiversity. So we are not just growing one particular kind of crop. Though again, I need to go back and say that you can also have organic farms that actually grow just one kind of crop. But in my opinion, it's okay, but it's not very sustainable because the best way is to grow a wide variety of crops and also have animals that increase the biodiversity and also help the farm to be able to, to actually be more sustainable in the long term. So we actually have more than 20 different kinds of vegetables, fruits and, um, and herbs that we grow here on our farms. So uh, we started by growing our own food for our own home consumption and then with time now we scaled that up because we find that, you know, when we went into business, people want to get a large variety of food. For their tables and they want to get it all organic and they want to get it in one area so that's why we have a large variety and also one good thing about biodiversity is that you're able to mitigate against the different risks that could come about in terms of um, uh, poor rains or like you know like maybe you don't have good soil for one particular crop but what we've done like in this particular season for example we grew a lot of maize which didn't do very well because uh, the rains really failed. Last year, we didn't get good rains at all in the short rains. And this year, in the long rains, can you imagine we only got four days of rain? Four. I mean, four days of rain cannot sustain a maize crop. So we also grow drought-resistant crops, like this beautiful sorghum that you can see right here. So when you have biodiversity, in case one crop doesn't do well, you always have another one. So my maize hasn't done very well. I won't get any for home consumption. But wheat has reached, it's going to be very good fodder for my animals. But with sorghum, I'm actually going to get some for my own consumption. So it's good to have biodiversity because we are battling with a lot of climate change and with a lot of issues in our environment. So it's always good to have a wide variety of crops. So if one doesn't do well, the other one will actually give you some form of food security.